Amen. Amen. Look, don't don't that just sound like we need to be somewhere under a tent somewhere where where you know everybody got a fan in their hand and somebody passing out, well, you want some water? You all right, you know whatever. But we just singing and having a good time in the Lord. And you know what? That's one of the things that I most look forward to after we get on the other side of this pandemic is being able to get together with your brothers and sisters from different areas and being able to just worship and celebrate God for the things that he has done in our lives. Look, you know, you know, you don't miss stuff like that until you can't have it no more. You know, we take stuff like that for granted until it's not available to us anymore. But as all of you have made um, evident by your being here this afternoon, you just can't get enough of the word of God. You just can't get enough of being with the people of God. And we thank all of you that came back out um, on this afternoon. As always, we're thankful for those of you that are watching us via live stream. God bless you. And we're thankful to have you here with us here on this afternoon. We are continuing in, the, in our series of lessons that we've been doing here on Sunday afternoon. Um, we know we began in the beginning. We started out over there in the book of Genesis and we worked our way through and we worked our way through the book of Exodus as well. And now we come a, a, a good bit in a short while. So now um, we are in the book of Leviticus um, and our text for tonight is going to come from the book of Leviticus chapter number 11 verses 44 and 45. You know, we put out, we got our chairs situated, but I was looking this morning and I said, Lord, we're almost out of chairs. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, uh, and I thought about it, you know, it's a good thing to be overcrowded. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a good thing. That's a good problem to have. Amen. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 and 45. The Bible um, says, for I am the Lord, your God. So you must consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not defile yourselves by any swarming creature that crawls on the ground. For I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. So you must be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Now, when you're talking about the book of Leviticus, the entire book of Leviticus is called Leviticus because the majority of the books deals with the Levitical priesthood, the Levite priest and how they were to conduct the worship of God and how they were to administer the, the services of the sacrifices that were to make. And it's a book that is rich with law and regulation, which is a continuation of the laws and the regulations that were given and we read about in the book of Exodus. And these laws and these regulations that we'll call reveal how man is able to gain access to God, how man is able to reach God. And the Levites were responsible for taking care of these laws and to exercise proper judgment with these laws. And so we have the tribe of Levi who was not allotted a portion of land like the rest of the tribe of Israel. Why is that? They were not allotted that. However, they were supported by the tithes of the giving of the people. Listen at that, y'all. God is calling his people together and God says, okay, y'all, you get this portion of land. Y'all, you get this portion of land. Y'all get this and y'all go over there. He said, but the Levites, the Levitical priesthood, you are going to it inherit my house. And listen, the Levitical priesthood live off the tithes of the people. So the tribe of Levi and only the descendants of who? Aaron were allowed to be high priests. And the other Levites would serve as assistants to the other priests and they would help with the care to take care of the tabernacle. So we think about this book of Leviticus. Where did it come from? So, of course, God is the real author of the book. You know, God is the author of all books that we get. But he, he used men to write it. Um, but Moses is one of uh, who is recorded um, with all of the laws and the regulations. So the New Testament confirms that Moses is the author of Leviticus. And Leviticus, Leviticus, when you read it, it does not note an author. But as you come over to the New Testament scripture, it identifies who in fact is the author of that. We find that in Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse number 2, he says, And behold, a leper came and worshipped him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed and Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go your way, 
show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that who commanded? As a testimony to them. So Jesus says, Moses commanded this, and this command is found where? In Leviticus chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. And Luke talks about um, the purification of women after they have um, given birth to children. In Leviticus chapter 2 and verse number 22, it says, Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him before the Lord. Luke didn't come up with that on his own. Where did he get that from? Leviticus chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. So there is no doubt that Moses is the author. And many believe that the book of Leviticus was properly written sometimes. So Leviticus chapter 27 and 34 says that these are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. And we read about, we talked about that a little bit on last week as we were still in Exodus. And you know, a lot of the things that God were making as commandments for the people and telling them that things that they had to follow and do, to them, they didn't make sense. You know, to them, you know, why is it that we got to do all these stuff and keep all these rules and these regulations? But we know that God was showing them, okay, I brought y'all out of bondage. I delivered you from the hand of Pharaoh. Now I simply want y'all to obey what it is that I've told you to do. And how many of y'all can agree with me and say that truly the Bible is right when it says, is that obedience is better than what? So out of all the books in the Bible, church, Leviticus contains more direct messages from God than any other books in the Bible. This book mentions speaking to someone or of himself more than 103 times in the book of Leviticus. And there are several words in Leviticus, holiness is found over 87 times. The word blood in regards to cleansing is used 89 times and the word atonement is used 45 times. So the key verses that sum up this book is our text on tonight. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44 and 45. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy. Did he say you can be if you want to or how did he say that? You shall be a, sound like he's telling you what to do, right? Yeah. For I am holy, neither shall you defile yourselves with any creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. For I am the Lord who brings you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. So you shall be holy, for I am holy. What is God saying? Okay, I answered your prayer. I answered your request. I brought y'all out of bondage. I delivered you from the hand of Pharaoh. So just in case y'all get out here to where you want to forget what I've done for you, I want to remind you that I am the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And since I brought you out and you are now my child, I want you to act like my child. I want you to act like you've been delivered from slavery. I want you to act like you've been delivered from bondage. How are you going to do that? By being holy. So the theme of the book of Leviticus is what? Holiness. And that God is a holy God. So Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So the same thing is true under the new covenant as well. When we go to Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse number 22, it says, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no what? Remission of sin. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places, made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of God for us, not that he should offer himself often, but as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another, he then would have had to suffer often with the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, 
But after this is the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin, from salvation. That's gospel right there, y'all. That, that, that's, all, that's all kind of gospel right there. And Jesus became our one time. Listen at that. Nobody else had to come behind him. Jesus became our one time blood sacrifice. And it is only through his blood that we can gain access to God today. I'm going to write about it. So we, we, we have so much better. We have it so much better under the new covenant, y'all. We good people. Let me tell you, if you don't think you're blessed, let me go ahead and tell you, you blessed. You, you're in good shape. You are living under the new covenant. Just think about this, y'all, that there are 600 different laws and regulations that the law of Moses commanded for the people to keep. And listen, you can keep it partially. You had to keep it all the way. Let me tell you, some of us can do good with some stuff partially. Yeah. Be real with it and shame the devil. Some of us can do good with some stuff partially, but we can't do it perfectly. And that was the thing. They had to keep that stuff perfectly, y'all. I'd have been messed up when they talking about you can't eat shellfish. I'd have been done. I'd have been... I, I'd have been done. It would have been no hope for me. Sister Coffee, we'd have been done. Over there just smiling at the crafty crab. But we'd be happy though. So, and in this time we know that mainly the priests had access to these written laws. And everyone had to come to the priest to make a judgment call on these laws. But aren't we blessed today that we don't have to go to the high priest to hear what it is that the Lord has said, but at any given time, you can open the word of God and you can read it for yourself and get an understanding of the word of God. So some people complain today and say that keeping the stuff that we gotta keep in the New Testament is hard. I just wonder how life would be for them if they live under the Old Testament. Y'all, we got it so much easier under the new, the new covenant because there are a lot less laws and regulations and we have access to the word of God. First John chapter 5 verse number 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments, the Bible says, are not grievous. Another way it says it's not burdensome. In so many words, God's word, God's commandments that he's given us, church, are not so hard that you can't handle it, are not so hard that you cannot keep it, but you got to learn how to ask God to help you in those areas where you are weak to give you the strength to be able to handle that stuff. You know, you may have desires and you may have wants and you may have the willpower to want to do the right stuff. But how many of y'all know that the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh in and of itself is also very weak. So the, it goes through a, a bunch of different laws. First, we got um, beginning in chapter one, going to chapter six. You got the laws of sacrifice that the book of Leviticus talks about. And God gives some very specific ways. Just think about this. God goes into detail of how he wants things done. Let me tell you, in the word of God, God has given us detail on how he work, wants things done. So we don't have to, even in the Old Testament, they didn't have to question it because he gave them specific ways that the animals were to be sacrificed and offered as burnt offerings unto him. And he also covers how grain offerings are to be made and depending on what kind of offering was made, God had certain ways that he wanted that stuff to be done. And you can read that in your own leisure, Leviticus chapter 4, verses 3 to 12. It goes through detail in that. And then beginning in chapter 6, going to chapter 10, you got the laws of the priesthood, the laws of the priests. And in these chapters, the priests, the priesthood are given specific instruction on how they are to conduct the sacrifices and how they are to conduct themselves as well. Let me tell you, God, God has also told us how we ought to live for ourselves, not just for everybody else. God has given us ways on how we ought to conduct ourselves. And we also learn that parts of the sacrifices are made to be given to the priests to eat and to live on. Let me tell you, they, they thought they took care of the man of God back in the day. He didn't, he didn't have to worry about that. They took, he lived well. They took care of him. 
So we learn a valuable lesson from this in Leviticus chapter 10, beginning at verse number 1. It said, then Nadab and Abihu, y'all remember them, don't you? Oh, yeah. Said Nadab and Abihu, you know, they, they, you know, they couldn't help it because their daddy was a troublemaker. <laughs> their daddy was making up stuff that he shouldn't have made. So it said, then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Could y'all imagine how things would have ended up for them if they would have just offered what God had commanded? If they would just did what they were, how, you know, what's so hard about doing what we're supposed to do? What's so hard about doing what it is that God has commanded of us to do? They could have saved themselves from dying on that day. They would have still died, but it might not have been that day. You know, they could have saved themselves from their trouble had they just did what it was that the Lord had commanded them. Now, they, Nadab and Abihu will forever, for everybody, for ages to come, they're going to serve as of examples of why it's important that you do what God says you to do. They tried to offer a strange fire that was not commanded. And what did it cost them? Their lives. It cost them their lives, sure. Don't mess around and let, 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 let nothing in this life cost you your life. That you can't let go of it. That you're trying to hold on to it. You ought to be used for the glory of God. So in chapters 11 through 22, we got what we call the laws of purity or the laws of purification. Now, these chapters cover a lot of information, and I implore you, you got time this week. You got time this week to book, read the book of Leviticus. I'm charging y'all. Go ahead this week and read the book of Leviticus. Now, the whole idea of these chapters tells what makes a person unclean. What makes a person unclean and what that person needs to do in order for them to become clean again. Now, those who are unclean, the Bible says, are not allowed to go into the tabernacle. Could you imagine? You know, God knows your spirit. You know, God knows your soul, right? So y could y'all imagine if when we came here on Sunday mornings that God had an angel posted up at the door and only those that were pure and clean could come in? <laughs> look, look, let me tell you, folks, look, folks, uh, I will bless her. I will, I will. I, what, what, what's going on? No, you can't get in today. Try to get in next Sunday. You can't get in today. <laughs> so those people were not even allowed to come into the tabernacle area. Or even some of these were to go outside. And they had to go outside and camp on the outside of Israel. Giving birth made a woman unclean. And a sacrifice had to be made in order to make her clean again. Leviticus goes into great detail about those, the lepers, and, and checking them for leprosy, and knowing how to make them clean if their leprosy goes away, and they had a law for what to do with the clothes that the lepers had on. Let me tell you, God gave them information for everything that they needed. He gave, and we can read about that in Leviticus chapter 16, beginning at verse number 1, going down to verse number 22. And to summarize this, the high priest would offer a bull for his sins and then he would take two goats one would be used as a sacrifice for the people the other one for the high priest he would put both hands on the goat and he would confess the children of Israel's sin and the goat would be let go to run out in the wilderness and this goat is called the scapegoat that's where you get that word from it's called the scapegoat and would bear the sins of the children of Israel. And of course, this was just symbolic and temporary and pointed forward to win who? Jesus Christ. It's all pointing to the same man, y'all. Would once and for all take care of sins because these animal sacrifices really couldn't take away sin. They were just a shadow of that that was to come one day. So Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at verse number 1, lets us know. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these things, same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. For the worshippers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. 
But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats would be able to take away our sins. What can wash away our, my sins? Somebody tell me. Now, when Jesus allowed himself to be sacrificed, the cleansing power of the blood, because y'all know that in order for us to be able to have this opportunity that we have, they had to find some blood that was innocent. They had to find some blood that was pure. Noah was good, but Noah liked to drink. He wasn't qualified. Moses was a good man, but Moses had a temper problem. Moses, he, he couldn't wait. He was impatient. Peter had a cussing spirit. Oh, Paul was a bad man. Paul, you never know if he was going to switch up and be Saul another day. All of these folk had some issues about them. All of these things had, uh, had some struggles that they had, but there was only one that was pure. There was only one that was innocent. The Bible says that he did no wrong, neither was there any guile found in his mouth. Let me tell you, he didn't even tell a white lie. You know, even though all, even though all lies are lies, you know, he, 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 he never even told a white lie. There was no untruth that was found in him. Amen. He is a holy God, church. And he expects us to be holy. You've heard me say it before. He said, be holy, for I am holy. And if you read it backwards, what does it say? Holy am I, and holy ye be. Yeah. Either, way, Either way, he's telling us that we got to be holy, and we got to live holy. So he goes on and he talks about how they will be blessed if they keep these commandments. He said in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 3 and 4. He says if you walk in my statutes. And keep my commandments. And not just walk in them and keep them. But perform them. Amen. He said. <laughs> then will I give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce. And the trees of the field. Shall yield her fruit. That's a blessing y'all. That's a blessing. The trees of the field are going to yield their fruit and the land is going to yield forth the increase. How's that going to happen? Because you did what it was that I commanded for you to do. Let me tell you, church, we can live better than we are living. We can have greater opportunities than what we have. How can we have that? By doing what it is that God has commanded of us to do. As Christians, we are commanded to do what the Bible calls to work righteousness. How do we work righteousness? By doing what it is that God has commanded of us to do. You ain't got to second guess it. Just do what God told you to do. Well, we got talked about him this morning. How Naaman, how he didn't want to go to and then wash. And the man had to tell him, he said, you know, if the man, if he told you to do it, whatever, well, go ahead and do it. Do what it is that he has commanded of you to do. And all of us have a copy of the word of God, I'm sure. Some may be a little dustier than others, but all of us have a copy of the word of God. All of us ought to be taking time to get to know the word of God, to spend time in God's word. In order, how, and as I asked the question this morning in class, I said, how can you say you know somebody that you don't talk to? How can you say you know somebody that you don't spend any time with? And, and let me tell you, and, and the, uh, David said something that's really profound. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart then I may not sin against thee. Apparently David um, had picked up a few tips from what was written over here. So basically saying, if I study the word of God in order to know the word of God, and I add the word of God to my life, then I'm going to know the difference between that stuff that is pleasing to God and that stuff that is not pleasing to God. And so therefore I can be in a better stance to be who God has called for me to be and to be blameless before God because I'm able to keep his commandments. Now, who is it among us that can keep all of God's commandments totally? Going once. Going twice. I believe we all in the same boat. I believe we all got the same mindset. None of us are able to keep God's commandments totally. To keep them, you know, and, you know, and, and it just started with us. It started in the garden. Don't mess with that tree. Let's go mess with that tree, you know. <laughs> you know, we, we've, been, we've been having that issue. We've been having that problem. But as children of God, let me tell you, and you know, e everybody struggles in certain areas. But let me tell you this. The thing is not to remain in that thing, 
But here it is, Lord, I'm, I see I'm struggling with this right now. And you got to learn how to talk to God and pray and say, Lord, you know what? If I'm weak in this area, Lord, make me strong. If I'm falling down in this area, Lord, I want you to pick me up. And Lord, I want you to make me better so I can be who you have called me to be. And if you, and just look at every great individual that God used in the scripture, they had issues. But guess what? God used them for his glory. God used them to do mighty things. And even though they had some things about them, let me tell you, and God can use you as well this morning, church. God can use you on this afternoon if you will make yourself available. If you will follow his commandments, if you will follow his will, do what it is that God has commanded of you to do. You don't ever have to question God. If he said it, that's what he meant. You know, you know, you know so I, I, I said what I meant and I meant just what I said. That's what God, his word is just like that. His word has already been settled in heaven and he's given us his word. I'm so thankful that we have something that those in Leviticus did not have. We have the complete full word of God that we can follow and that we can guide our, la our lives and that we can govern ourselves by. And we can know what God's will is for our life. Know what God wants us to stay away from. Know what God wants us to enjoy and, what, and know what he wants us to have. We can have a good life, church. Ted. Let me tell you, we can have a good life in Jesus Christ if we'll do what it is that he has commanded of us to do. And one thing that he has commanded of all to do, God has commanded men and women all places everywhere to come to repentance. He's called that. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Men, women, boys and girls, black, white, wherever you come from, God desires men and women alike to come to salvation. He's made it available to us, and I'm so glad that even though we have the luxury of having the access to a free gift, it didn't come free, but it came at a mighty high price. It cost Jesus Christ his very life. It cost him the shedding of his blood. Talking about this blood for the book of Acts lets us know that it was the shedding of his blood that he purchased the church, that he purchased the body that you and I are members of today. And isn't it good to know that when you wake up in the morning that I'm in the body of Christ and that if I remain faithful unto death, guess what? I got a crown the way to me that'll never fade away. I got a home that's been prepared somewhere beyond the end of the sky. Let me tell you, they can they be traveling all up there to Pluto and, and Venus and Mars and all these places. Let me tell you, it's another place that's out of this place that none of us are able to reach, that none of us are able to get to unless God take you up that way. And one of these days, we're all looking forward to hearing those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher and I'll make you a ruler over a minute. But the only way you're going to be able to hear that is if you start, if we start doing what God has commanded of us to do and be obedient even when it don't make sense even because let me tell you if I would have been living back then and Moses come down there reading off these rocks talking about no more shellfish who I'm gone <laughs> catch me on the flip side you know but thanks be unto God oh that one day over there in the book of Acts chapter 10 where Peter went down there to the house of Simon the tanner and God showed him a vision of all kind of four-footed beasts and other animals. And God told Peter, he said, arise, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter said, I never eaten anything that was unclean or common. God said, Peter, what I call clean. Let no man call common. So we can eat our crabs all we want, sister coffee. Have all we want because of what the word of God said. So my brother and my sister, God has made it available. He has made salvation available unto you today if you want it. It's up to you to make the decision in your heart, wherever you are. You need to make the decision in your heart. Are you going to live for God? Are you going to make that decision for him? Come to him today. Come by hearing his word. Believe in the same, repent of your sins, confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. Allow the Lord himself to wash you of your sins, to make you new, to make you clean, and add you to his body. Remain faithful unto death. He'll give you a crown of life that'll never fade away. My brother, my sister, if you're here, you're watching, you're standing in the need of prayer. All of us got something that we need prayer for. So if you would like to make that prayer request known here on today, you have that opportunity to do that at the time. As together we stand and sing the song. I've sinned against you, Lord. I admit that, that I've done wrong. Well, then I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, I'm 